Hey guys, welcome to another episode of We Could Have Done Porn. Uh, before we begin, a couple of shameless plugs. You can find us on uh, WCDPcast.com. We are on YouTube now, so any of the latest episodes will be uploaded to YouTube out under our uh, under our production company, Roman Bear Productions. You can look us up on YouTube. Remember to type in Roman Bear as one word. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out why that's a problem, but you will you will see the cute Roman Bear avatar. Um, other than that, I have nothing else, so let's just get into the show. So hi guys, it's uh, well it's Friday for me, not for you. You guys, it's Monday or sometime after Monday, so maybe it's Friday, I don't know. How are you, Aaron? I'm well. <laughs> oh man, uh, so I'm having one of those days where uh, I, like, you know, where I like I feel like I'm awake, but I know I'm like not really here because uh, I got home last night. I, I hung out with uh, one of my buddies I, I met on stream yesterday, and mm-hmm. uh, I got home uh, around like eleven, and I was like, I don't know what to do. I'm not very tired. I had like three coffees tonight, and I was just kind of sitting in my apartment. And my little brother uh, Austin he recommended a, a game on the phone called uh night of the full moon Hmm. it's like cool little card battle like story game and i was like all right i'll just lay in bed and play this and uh the next thing i know i see that the sun is out and not just like out i i mean like fully out like risen and it was 8 30 in the morning i played the game for like seven hours it was dumb i i didn't even notice the time go by uh, so I, I, I got, like, uh, a nice nap. I got a very long nap in. I woke up, I, I went to bed at about 9 a.m., I woke up at about 2. <laughs> um, still kind of like, woo! How are you doing? I'm doing well. How was your, uh, how was your, how was your, uh, hanging out with, uh, streaming partner? It was good, buddy. It was, it's cool. I'm trying to, like, do my best to, like, get, get out there and meet other folks, uh, you know. Uh, I'm new to this whole streaming thing, as you guys all know, and the more people I can talk to and be like, Hey, so how'd you get into this? Like, what do you know? Yada yada. Like, the better I can understand, like, the culture of it and how I can improve and, like, what I want to do with it. And mm-hmm. for the most part, I think the channel is, uh, content-wise, mostly where I went. There's a couple, like, little technical things I want to fix. Uh, like, it bothers me to no end that my camera's on the side and not in front of me. Uh, I, I like, want to fix that. I should probably have fixed that today, actually. I probably could have run out and bought a, uh webcam but i did not because i'm a lazy boy not in budget uh it's it is just barely in budget (laughs) it is like budget adjacent (laughs) everything is out of my budget um so i also ran into so i ran into uh an organic fan oh as in somebody who managed to find and watch and like my overthinking a video without me telling them about it. Um, nice. It's really surprising. Like, um, at work, my fiance is like, hey, this person that sits like across from me watched your video. Because their roommate watched it and like, they really like it. I was like, oh, that's so strange. It is. It's very surreal, like, to have somebody who like watched my video just. Because, uh, not because I told them to, (laughs) um, that might just be because, like, I guess the algorithm kind of, you know, where I work and they're there, so maybe they, like, that somehow that managed to find its way to them. Uh, yeah, but so it was really cool. Funny thing, I I, I, I was actually gonna say this, I don't know what you did to the algorithm, uh, like, or not the algorithm, like, but, like, the ads that you've been putting out, but (laughs) I got one. (laughs) <laughs> yeah and so did my brother sage we both got uh the ad for like our channel and i was like this is weird i wouldn't be surprised to be honest like that might just be because of your relationship to the page it could be um it it probably takes that and is like oh i'm gonna attribute this as well so people who like the page uh probably are going to find that ad regardless um i didn't make that a specific thing but i think facebook just kind of does that automatically because it's like Of course, why wouldn't I? Um, The interests are just vague enough 
uh, to have a broad reach and somewhat specific enough to get to where I want to get, like some really basic ones like movies, podcasts, uh, game streaming, gaming, those kind of things are yeah. of course attached to it. Um, but I don't, I don't know how any of this Facebook shit works. I'm just, I'm winging it. I'm just hoping that somebody will see a I cute bear. A bunch of different buttons, and sometimes people click the buttons. Yeah, I'm, I'm not like, I'm not very good at it. I'm just, uh, it's more of a just like, I'm good at visual, the visual aspect. I'm like, all right, I could probably reel somebody in with some visuals, but as far as anything else goes i have no idea what i'm doing i have no idea about the specifics of it so yeah it's been it's been an interesting week uh talking to somebody who's just a a natural born fan and really liked how i did the video and told me some specifics about what they liked about it and i was i was very happy with that that's fantastic i I, yeah i didn't even know that that was a thing that happened to you oh that makes me hype yeah Uh, (laughs) no Um, uh, my, my 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 I've been doing just work stuff and uh, kind of getting ready for. Uh, we I'm in, at the beginning of the end as I am seven weeks out from leaving New York. Seven weeks. Yep. Uh, so, you know the the usual like headaches of uh, seeing what I need to like get taken care of and like get removed from the apartment, what I have to clean, what I'm taking, what I'm leaving, all that nonsense. Uh, so. This has been like minor things. Uh, I I did send my official email. To the this the Sunday group, and even though the kids have known for a while, I had to, I it was like sad because I was like I have to type out this email and tell them that like we're leaving, like officially, like this is the day, this is the last date, and I don't like it. <laughs> so I was I was I was a sad okay, don't cry. for a little bit. Um, don't cry, Scott. And I'm getting all these nice emails from the parents back, being like, I don't know if you like understand how big of an impact you've had on them the past few years and all this other stuff. I'm like, stop it! No more feels. Not okay. <laughs> You're gonna cry on your last day. Oh, 110. percent I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and hold it together in front of the small children. You're, you're gonna be doing a game too, and you're gonna be like, and and the wizard um, casts cry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's gonna happen. It's some, and then they roll a one, and you're like, "It's not effective." <laughs> <laughs> the enemy feels no sympathy. <laughs> that's exactly how this is gonna end. Oh, um, man. yeah. So, I guess uh, not too much uh, outside of work. Like that's really what this is just becoming is. Our, our uh, weekly discussions have just become, like, what did we do and what do we have to do? Yeah, it's funny. It's, because, uh, like, I think some people have been around for a while know that, like, every... Before we do the show, me and Aaron have, like, our, our housekeeping. Where me and him just talk about, like, the actual, like, you know, nuts and bolts of the operation. The, the, like, hey, these seven things broke this week. They're little, but... Aaron, I don't know how to fix them. Or on the other end, I'm like, Aaron, do you know how to fix this? And he's like, I don't know what Twitch is. And I'm like, okay, I'll go Google it. <laughs> what is what even is a Twitch? Uh, is that that little blonde kid in South Park? Uh, so, yeah, no, uh, it, it, it's a it's a th- time, and I, like I'm having fun. Uh, I'm still super into it, but I think. It's funny, it's only been like a month and a half, but it's already hit that point where I'm like, it's it's become second nature. Mm-hmm. Where I'm like, okay, this is just what we do now. Like, Friday, podcast, then finish, like half hour break, then stream. Stream until I tired. Then like, Saturday, relax all Die. afternoon, get on stream a little early, stream until I get tired. And like, that's, that's life now. I'm like, okay, I do these things. Like, uh, Saturday is also the day I work on like technical things for the stream and like adding things like tomorrow i i uh there's a, a weird audio function that you you need to like a workaround that you need for talking on chat on a console while streaming mm-hmm. so i have to figure out that tomorrow uh that'll be fun because i'm supposed to be doing uh, some co-streams coming up because anthem is a co-op game and i have some buddies who are going to be playing so we're, we're going to be playing I think a lot with my buddy Odin's Wrath 97. That'll be pretty cool. Cool. Yeah. But uh, I don't have any more in the, the ho- like housekeeping part, except for uh, 
Uh, the two two things. No, I lied. We have two things. Oh no. Uh, one is of course uh, continued thanks to, uh, to to Rick Orange who keeps making all of our art uh, when I am incredibly demanding and annoying at two a.m. Uh, and two is our Patreon is officially live and finished. In case you didn't know, it's uh, patreon.com slash Roman Bear. Uh, you can find us there. If you like the podcast, by all means, toss us a dollar. Uh, yeah. So that that is all for uh, the, the ads and the fun stuff like that. And I think now we can move on to uh, some achievements unlocked. Woo-hoo! Well, Aaron, uh, what do you got for me? What, what have you done this week? How, how's like what, what's what's your thing? Did you win? Ooh. Did you win the game? No. I'm pretty sure you just lost the game. Definitely did not win. And so yes. did everybody else who's listening to this podcast. Oh. <laughs> I lost. Oh, bad. You person. have to say it, too. Yep. Um, so, uh, I'm kind of disappointed with myself. I didn't finish the script like I was really hoping to do this week because I absolutely need to start doing video stuff. Because it's due in, like, less than two weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, I am really having a hard time uh, trying to figure out how I'm going to make this work monthly without it eventually becoming a full-time thing. It is, I am just praying, praying for full-time status. Um, But we will see. Uh, I, let's see, an achievement. Um, I mean... Baby steps. Uh, I've made it through two of three Calvin and Hobbes books. Um, going through the last one now. They're the it's the collector's one where it's like all of his work piled into three books. So each book is about five hundred pages. Um, and I've been going through each and every one, looking for very specific strips um, to use. And so yeah, there's that. Um, I've done a lot of reading. Um, it's, it's just a lot, like, a lot of the beginning process of my videos is just consuming information from everywhere. It's so hard, too, because at first it's just shotgun style, like, I'm looking for this basic premise, and then finding all the little things that, uh, come off from it, and I'm like, okay, now let's take these and consolidate them into, into points, which is difficult, especially what I'm doing right now because I'm reading studies and these these crazy um, like long like I, I read a I'm reading a whole book just to kind of get an idea of this topic because I'm not the topic that I'll be discussing besides Calvin and Hobbes obviously is an economic theory which is not my area of expertise but the the thesis. Is but enough we're to make me so happy. good at all the the numbers and and the dollars and the companies and the business. I'm I'm more interested in the very specific thing I'll be talking about. We're um, so good at econ. Econ. Yeah. Uh, so there's that. Um, just a lot of reading. Uh, like it's I, I'll, I'll count that as an achievement. I've done a lot of reading. I've kind of got what I'm going to talk about. Now I just need to find all my specific examples to make that work. And um, and just consolidate it into a script with some uh, with some good points. Um, it'll definitely be a lot shorter than the last one, so hopefully we don't have a drop in interest because my video went from fifty three minutes to like twenty. Yep. Uh, so I like I I really wholeheartedly think that like the shorter videos are gonna do better, because um, like finding fifty minutes is hard uh, and. It, it, it's weird, but uh, believe it or not, we as Americans are conditioned to think of specific time frames as having specific meaning. Uh, like, most people don't realize this, but if you see something that's, like, 45 minutes long, you immediately associate it with being a television, like, drama, and that's what you expect. And the same thing for if you see something that is about 22 minutes long, you expect it to be a comedy. Hmm. Uh, it's just, like, a, it's a thing because that's the TV that we grew up on and like, that might change in the next like decade or two, but -hmm. for the past almost century, that's how televisions run. And that's how people see it because that was what we grew up on. That's what we were raised on. And I get you. It's real. It's uh, it's pretty crazy. Actually, I have a friend who used to work at Buzzfeed and she used to do all that, uh, like writing for that kind of stuff and like planning around those things. And we were talking about it. We had a big long conversation about how, uh, it's weird how something as 
strange is like a time like a number of time can like subconsciously affect your view of things or like what you want to watch and i i kind of did the test this week and i, I like it, it was 100 percent true like i was like i would see like a video from like the completionist who i really like and he would have on occasion a video that's like 27 minutes and i'd be like i'm not gonna watch that now uh because and i would find a video from him that was like 16 minutes and mm-hmm. I would eat, watch that while I had dinner instead of the 27 minute one because it was just a little too long. And it was so <laughs> weird. It was the weirdest thing. I was like, this is so strange. I was like, it's 100% true because I just did it. Yeah, um, 53 minutes will be is like a Game of Thrones episode. Yeah. Um, with with way more packed in. Uh, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, <laughs> boom. Uh, so, yes, I am. It'll be significantly shorter. And the thing is, I wonder how YouTube will change that mindset because, um, like, people do just so many different types of things. Like, even some of the channels I have are never uh, necessarily consistent with their time frames. Like, you're never trained to expect any level of time. Like, one one guy I watch has, like, videos that are, like, seven minutes long, and then we'll have a hour and 40 minute breakdown of why fallout 3 is a terrible game uh he's wrong if he said fallout 3 fuck that guy no you need to watch it it's actually no he's very well put wrong. together it's, no, no, it's no, one of the, no no that guy's that guy's a cunt <laughs> no i uh, i i agree with a lot of his points he's wrong and that's fine it's he's not it is it is one of the best constructed like best made like mm. open world video games it was like the yeah one. you will not you will not like this guy's video but here's the thing you don't play video games. You don't get to say this. <laughs> Here's the thing. I, I encourage you to give it a watch because it's less... It's it's not just about... Like, it, it takes a look at a little bit of everything. Like, of course, an hour and a half video is going to... Like... It has Ron Perlman saying war. War never changes. It's beautiful. Oh, that can't be your reason for liking the game. <laughs> it has Liam Did Neeson's. you know... No, no, no. <laughs> Did you know that in the first Fallout, like, the main villain guy you enco- encounter... Is voiced by the guy that voiced Winnie the Pooh, Jim Cummings. That's cool. I love Jim Cummings. He's great, and he that. does like an awesome performance. Your dad um, is Liam Neeson's in Fallout Three. <laughs> um, he does say that he does say that Fallout. Uh, is it New Vegas? Nuke Vegas? New Vegas. New Vegas. He said he's like that one. Basically, fixes all the problems of Fallout Three. Except for it doesn't run. Run on what? It does. It doesn't function. It is the most buggy and broken out of all the Fallout games. Oh yeah, but that's kind of just an inherent <laughs> problem of Bethesda, isn't it? Yeah, but it, it is. It, well, it, it's it's not made by Bethesda. <laughs> it's made by Obsidian. Didn't they? Doesn't uh, like Bethesda has pretty high standards when it comes to releasing like quick standards, like turnaround standards, right? Uh, for that one, they did. They only had like a year and a half. It was really short. Eesh, but uh, Fallout New Vegas, awesome game. It's just it breaks a lot. It's hysterical, uh, especially if you uh, have the DLC but, on PC. Yeah. Um. And here's the thing. Like, I even watched a video. He has another really, really long video called Sherlock is Garbage, and here's why. By the way, <laughs> here here's the thing. Um, the that format, that title format. This is garbage, and here's why. That's where that's from. He's the original guy to put that. And it was for a Sherlock review video he did. And while I don't necessarily agree with all the points, I did find it, uh, like... Yeah, like, I'm I sure like, it's a well-researched video and everything. Yeah, no, I, I, it's good. It's really good. You should I, watch it. I and literally like, cannot begin to fathom how he could argue that, like, Fallout 3, a game that, like, heavily altered and, like, adapted how people want uh, open-world video games to play out, especially RPGs, is inherently bad. That is, that is um, definitely not an argument that I could begin to like create in my mind because like most if you of play it has game, to, it's still fun now yeah most of it has to do with how the story and the mechanics kind of work together um i don't know i thought it was really well put together i i suggest watching it, it I, I will you try be, but I'm, I'm gonna stick with aaron's a fake gamer boy uh <laughs> i know i'm not a gamer. i have no stake in this it's also no, funny do. because he highly um he really liked uh um, what's I the swear game, to God, everybody? if he said that like four is better, then I'm gonna yell at him. 
I don't know. I don't remember what he said about four. He said New Vegas was good. I don't remember what he said about four. Um, I like that we've gone all off on this tangent because I. Uh, Scott yeah, sorry. Um, but Scott no, Rage it, is real. <laughs> he, he made a parody video, like a uh, not a parody, but a satire video uh-huh. of uh, an angry sky. Shit, what is it called? The, the, that game that came out that everybody was pissed off because it was buggy. Oh, um, um, No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky. So he made a satire rage video about No Man's Sky <laughs> that actually makes a lot of really good points for why the game is good and that everybody's, like, expectations from marketing that was pushed really heavily kind of, like, ruined some of the yeah, basic that, that, aspects of like the game. Yeah, that's, like, a super well-known thing, like, in the video game industry. It's, like, it's, it is it's, often considered one of the, like, worst... Like, nowadays, it's considered one of, the, one of, like, the worst PR runs because they they hyped things that this small team of, like, ten people couldn't do. Mm-hmm. And part of the problem is that, that like, te- the team didn't manage expectations and bring them down. They tried to, like, hype it up and meet them. And over the years, they've gotten there. They've hit the majority of those goals. But it took years after launch. And that's just, uh, it's a d- debacle. It'd be, like, me and you right now saying that, like, Roman Bear is the, like, premium platform to come like watch all of your content and like uh put your content like you should only yeah. come here uh when we've been doing this for a few months and like we're new uh like right. we know we're like building and we're super excited we think we make good content we think it's like worth the dollar but we're not gonna say we're like hbo yeah and that's kind of what they did yeah a lot of it too is just like people had weird expectations about what the game was supposed to be but it's like to me it always just looked like a thing where you just kind of walk around and like collect things and explore and build. It's just an exploration game. It has nothing to do with the campaign necessarily. Like there is one, but it's like backseat. Uh, Anyways. Anyway, so Scott, what is your achievement for the week? Yeah, we will. I'm going to make sure that like, we will add like this. Uh, Maybe at some point I will uh, watch this video and then me and you will debate on air. (laughs) You can bring in a specialist. (laughs) A specialist. (laughs) Find somebody who agrees with that man that knows video games and you guys. It's hard. Okay. So, I can't argue for him because he does also really like the Star Wars prequels, and I'm still waiting for his explanation so of that. he's a bad human being. Yes. But he's, like, fundamentally flawed as a human. You should just send him Mr. Plinkett's reviews. Oh, no, he's very aware of the Mr. Plinkett reviews. And they're correct. Because um, sad is it's coarse and it's rough and it gets everywhere. Um, but as yes. far as my achievement goes, uh, I got a couple, like, little ones. Uh for real, this time, I swear it, everything's finished on all the, th- all the things. I have Discord up. Uh, so we have a Discord channel for Roman Bear. If you want to join it, you can hit us up on any of the social media platforms. We will gladly send you a link. You can also drop in the stream. Uh, we, we have it set up in there. All you got to do is type in exclamation point Discord and it'll pop up in stream. Um, I, have, I have my commands set properly. I have all my audio issues figured out. I... Uh, did, we did our first co-stream on uh, Monday, playing Monster Hunter World with uh, Sakaris92, and uh, that worked really well. We had a lot of fun. It was good stuff. Uh, we actually got a little couple little raids, which were awesome. We've been getting a lot of like little raids from the community, which I feel really good about. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, that's my thing. I, like we're rolling. Uh, I, I I was worried that maybe Kingdom Hearts was going to stall us out a little more than I I, I like it did because I'm paranoid and crazy, and like. You know, every, like, point, like, mi- like one, like, zero, zero, one that we lose a follower, like, every time it's like, oh, my follower account was five, and today it's 4.899999. I freak out, because I'm me. Uh, and I'm, I'm making sure I don't do that. <laughs> so, uh, it, it helps, though, that, like, uh, I've got everything working, and everything, it, I no longer have to battle the technical side mm-hmm. before going live every day, because I understand it, I get how it works in the background. Uh, and so, again, that's... I'm feeling good that the channel is mechanically where I want it to be, minus a webcam. <laughs> and possibly a website. Uh, yeah, like, the website, I mean, I'm talking, like, specifically the stream. Oh, okay. Uh, like, we'll get a website eventually for, like, Roman Bear. Uh, yeah, I'm not worried about it right now. Like, we don't have the money to build a website no. right now and host it, so... We'll get to it eventually. Like, uh, yeah, we'll get to it when we have more stuff. Yeah, uh, and but for right now, like my, my biggest priority was, of course, making sure that everything looked correct technically and everything functioned the way it wanted to. I there's only one thing I might be changing up, and it's that um, it bothers me so very much that in uh, in Streamlabs, Streamlabs has, has a bunch of very nice things, uh, 
just little add-ons that you can just put in very easily into your overlay from inside of Streamlabs, which is the, the program that you use to actually put your stream onto Twitch. And I had, like, the little bar at the top that tells you, like, when people follow and all that stuff. And I like that. I appreciate that. It even tells you when people sub on Patreon. It's really cool. But I hate that it stays. It never goes away. And I've been looking for a setting to make it dissolve after a while, and there's not one. Oh. So I think I might switch which way I have it up there. I think I might switch to the other thing, which is, like, a little gif guy that pops up. It's like a little running zombie man. And I'll switch it to him. And uh, one day I will see if there's a way to make that custom and we can put a little walking bear. Uh, walk he will be the Roman bear. Roman bear. bear. <laughs> it'll be good. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I will record you saying that voice line and it'll say it every time. Roman bear. Yeah, that's He's my dream, Roman guys. Bear. If anybody understands how to build extensions and stuff, I want that. I want it. I want a like, follow and sub, like subscriber tracker and everything. That's just the Roman bear walking and it says Roman bear every time. If anybody knows one of those... Send it to me so I can fix that and do it, because it'd be cool. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's my achievement. I, I, th things are feeling good, and I've been uh, battling my senioritis <laughs> with uh, being here for a few more weeks, uh, you know, making sure I go to work as often as possible. Um, <laughs> it is, it's terrible. I have lots of sick time, because New York sick time, just you get it. You get like two weeks, and just any day that I w wake up and I'm like, it's cold in my room. I feel not good about that. I, it makes me unhappy. I'm sick. <laughs> you know? Because I get oh, paid. No. Yeah. I, I become a terrible employee. <laughs> no, it's it's perfectly reasonable to take all this time off. I, yep. I'm, I'm all for that. I, um, use your sick time, guys. Use it. Use the hell out of all the time you possibly have. Well, the, the other reason is, is again, th this is a me thing. This this goes back to, like, the fact that I have a very, like, addictive, like, personality. Like, I get really hooked into things that I like. Mm -hmm. um, is that I, I, I really did, I, like, I genuinely planned on trying to stream a few days a week, but I, I was trying, like, for, like, I was shooting for, like, ten hours of stream a week over, mm -hmm. like, four or five days. And and, and I, I do, like, 25 to 30 <laughs> Because I really like it, and it's like I just want to do that all the time. And, all the time. Uh, but I still have work, and so right. you know, you get that that point where it's like, oh man, I, I've worked like sixty plus hours this week, and I like spent like ten plus hours on a train, and then how many hours uh, doing like networking on Discord and all that stuff? And I'm like, that's why I'm sleepy right now. As I just like yeah. lag into my chair. <laughs> yeah, I've realized just how. Uh... How exhausting all of this is. I'm tired so very often now. Yep. And I think the bigger <clears throat> thing is, is like, uh, it's like maintaining a consistent, like, level. So when mm -hmm. I'm on stream, I, I really do my best to, if I come in really hype, I stay really hype. If I come in mellow, I stay mellow. Like, I, I will find a level and stay at that so it's not, like, weird. Like, halfway through the stream where, like, everybody's like, why is he crazy? Or why does he have no energy now? Um... And, like, ba balancing that is super weird, because is it like, as opposed to, like, what I'm used to when I, I do something, like, as the entertainer for many hours, is being a DM. And as a DM, there's long stretches of, like, silence or rest in there. There'll be, like, little five and ten minute pockets where, like, all the players are doing stuff, and I'm like, mm, well, I guess. And in stream, it's like, no, 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 I'm always the player. And so I'm getting used to that. So, uh, I guess with that, we can move on to yeah, our next man. segment. Let's move new on to the newsstand. Stand. So, uh, what is happening? What is new these days? Well, uh, I got a couple things. Uh, first, with video games. Okay. Uh, we have uh, Jump Force. If, if anybody's playing Jump Force, let me know. I want to know how it is. It looks banging. In case you don't know what it is, it is the 50th anniversary of Shonen Jump, like this year and, and like last year. I don't know. They're doing like a big old anniversary. Uh, and this is the fighting game for it. It's this really crazy, hyper-realistic looking fighting game. And it looks really cool. It's getting mediocre like ratings, but all anime games do. I just want to know if it's fun. Uh, if it is, I'm going to try to pick it up uh, eventually and play on stream. Because it just it's my kind of game. Uh, the other I wanna, one is... Yeah. Uh, real quick, I want to know what their crazy excuse is for having some of these characters battle each oh, other. Uh, they are coming into the real world and fighting. They're actually like coming out of Shonen Jump comic books and fighting in our world. Oh, no, no, no. I don't, I don't mean that. As in, how are some of these people even on the same level? Oh, it, because they're comic book characters. It's magic. 
Ah, uh, no. I thought they were going to come up with some ridiculous, uh, like the the thing they did for um, uh, the uh, the DC fighting game. Um, well, yeah, my favorite is the one in Injustice where uh, they they all have like nanites to make it so like Superman can't punch them in half. Yeah, they're all Superman strong now. Mm-hmm. So you know, I don't know why Batman even bothers with the gadgets in that case if he's just <laughs> Superman strong. Yeah, it, it's it's one of my favorite like. Video game nonsense excuses. That's what I. That's what I mean. That like they have light from from a Death Note in there, and I'm like, is his only thing that he writes in his book, and you you just drop and die. (laughs) But but Yugi has the heart of the cards, so he's got. Oh my god, Yugi's in it. (laughs) Yup, Yugi is a playable fighter. What's the little fluffy? Uh, a little fluffy Karibo. Oh, he's gonna he's gonna summon a Karibo, and that poor thing's gonna like, get the devastated. God cards as his like big things, and he has um, like I, like his certain attacks. I think do call out certain gods, like or certain cards. Like I think he has like Dark Magician flies out and stuff like that. I just I'm like trying to think of the mechanics of this game, and I can't even imagine. Okay, so go on. Uh, that was gaming. Uh, so that one, uh, Metro Ex- uh, Metro Exodus came out this week. It's the third in the trilogy of Metro games. They are based on a series of novels based in a like post-apocalyptic Russia, and it's it's people living inside the metro station lines because that's like where it was safe from the radiation. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's a really cool shooter, and this one looks beautiful. It's getting really high reviews. Uh, the only reason I haven't picked it up yet is because like I I had to buy Anthem because I've been saying we were gonna play it. And, uh, you know, only one game in budget. So, uh, it, that one is something that I will 100% pick up as soon as I can. Beautiful looking game, uh, by all means, check it out if you're looking for a more single player experience. Uh, and then, finally, for games, is Anthem. Anthem drops, uh, if you are an Xbox or PC, it has dropped already. Uh, dropped on Friday the 15th because Origin Access shenanigans. But for everybody else in the world, uh, by that I mean PS4 users, uh, we get it on the 22nd, so this Tuesday. So uh, the big reason I bring this up is because as long as everything goes right, we will have one bonus stream this week. And that will be us starting Anthem uh, at uh, probably at midnight on Tuesday. We'll go in and then we might do another stream on Tuesday proper. So uh, I don't know exactly how we're going to do it. I don't know if we're going to like stream something on Monday going into Anthem and then play Anthem or what. Uh, we, we will figure that out on Monday and, and see how crazy the tiny childrens make me uh, and, and how much rest I need before we do a, like, eight-hour stream of Anthem. Oh, God. Uh, it'll be cool. So uh, th- that is all for the, the video games. I have only one non-video game shout-out this week. It's something I haven't watched yet. It literally released today. But uh, Gerard Butler, several years ago, made uh, the, the lead man of My Chemical Romance made a comic book called Umbrella Academy. And it just got its live-action series released today on Netflix, and it looks pretty cool. I'm really excited to check it out. I'm actually supposed to uh, watch through it and talk about it with Sage. So uh, probably, at, like, tonight after stream, I will begin my watch-through. So. Oh, my God. That sentence took me on a roller coaster. I yeah. was like, okay, Gerard Butler. Wait. Wait. My Chemical Romance. Wait, he made a comic? And it's a live action? Oh my god. My I was all over the place on that one. Um my only thing, uh, news wise, is there's been this thing with the Oscars. Don't know if anybody's heard of this. Del Toro's um, mad. Yeah, Del Toro's real mad. So like cinematography and editing are coming off the like as the, the as categories, they're not getting their own Oscars anymore. I don't Which think, is, I thought it was that they're not being televised. I don't know. Uh, that's why I'm saying I like this was something I just like it was passing in like my feed and I'm like, oh no, Guillermo del Toro is mad about something. If Guillermo del Toro is mad, I'm mad because he's a sweet man and and he doesn't deserve to be upset. Um, I know they were like it sounded like they were taking the categories away. Uh, I, I'm trying to pull it up now. Uh, either way, a bunch of people were kind of up in arms about that. I mean, as much as you can be up in arms about a freaking award show. Um, but, you know, the Oscars is important to people whose, like, whole works are supposed to be 
honored by by uh, by the most prestigious award you can get for filmmaking. Um, yeah, it's uh, in it, cinemat- it's definitely lame. Uh, if they, cinematography if they is too big of a part, like yeah, that's uh, that's weird to me. Like c- cinematography and editing, like okay, the two things that make a movie. Are we getting rid of sound too? <laughs> no, all movies will now just be sound. They will be podcasts. Podcast movies, pod podcast movies. Our uh, we will submit Roman Bear. Uh, we will submit. We could have done porn for our Oscar for your consideration. <laughs> this is our for your consideration ad. <laughs> <laughs> we are two guys with some be- uh, mics in our bedrooms. Please, I'm just <laughs> consider us. I'm gonna just cut together a bunch of nonsense that we've said over the over the 43 episodes we've done so far. I'm just gonna cut like none of it's gonna be coherent. It's gonna be all over the place. Something about cereal. Something about movies it's gonna be crazy uh anyway so yeah there's that uh i'm still waiting for spider-man into the spider-verse to come out on dvd same that and uh the broly movie i, I really want to pick both of those up um, um well, spider-verse don't... i would probably rent first just to make sure I, I do love it as much as i i think i'm going to broly i'm straight up gonna buy i i want to own that movie so whenever i want to see some absolutely nonsense anime fighting i can watch it to uh, to tell you how much i love spider-man into the spider-verse I have never, like, I have not bought a movie since before college. That's crazy. I love Spider-Man to the Spider-Verse. It is a brilliant piece of film and deserves so much attention. Um, I am trying to find an excuse to do a video essay on it. <laughs> uh, but everybody seems to have already talked to death about it, and I'm just like, damn it. Yep, that's how it goes. All um, you people say things. I need to say something smarter. We'll get there. We'll, we'll, we'll be we'll, one day. We will be uh, one of the people probably, who get to say things. Probably about. something about how the movie itself is kind of a representation of how you can find your own way in the movie sphere. Like Spider Man's a character that's been done to death. There's so many Spider Man movies and there's TV shows and like it's hard to be your own Spider Man in that kind of like it's all kind of recycled. And then here comes this movie. That is literally about Spider-Man, Spider-Man from different dimensions, or in one, one case, uh, Spider-Woman, Spider-Lady? Is, what is, she, <laughs> is she just called Spider-Woman? Spider-Gwen. Well, yeah, but nobody knows she's Gwen. <laughs> they call her Spider-Woman. Do they? I don't know. I don't know. That's the problem. I, I know but... her comic is called, I believe, Spider-Gwen. Which, yeah, that that's a weird branding Decision. And then isn't the isn't the the little robot one uh, like a girl? Yes, she is. Uh, and, and then there's there's John Mulaney, the Spider Pig. No, John Mulaney. Yeah, Spider Pig. <laughs> no, 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 Spider Man John Mulaney. Spider Ham. No, his name is Spider Man John Mulaney. Spider Mulaney. <laughs> Spider Mulaney. Um, we agree. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, the whole movie is literally about all these different versions of Spider Man, and trying to teach another spider-man how to be their own spider-man so it's like there's something there i think yeah like that that's definitely cool but um i guess as far as uh any other news stand for you no other news stands um but i think this week we have elected to to morph breakfast club in the main event into one strange strange topic yeah so let's move to the main event club what did i bring this So th- this week, um, I get a text message from Aaron, and it's like, hey, how, we're going to talk about this thing. And I'm like, okay, okay, and I get in the shower, and 20 minutes later, I get out of the shower, and it, I have a text, and be like, but we're not doing that this week. We'll do that next week. And I'm like, well, what am I doing this week? Where am I? I need an adult. I haven't, where's my coffee? And I, I couldn't find it, because I'm always lost for the first, like, hour I'm conscious. But he sends me a link to a YouTube channel. Uh, many of you uh, may have heard of this one. It is called Tiny Kitchen. And I was like, Aaron, the hell is this? And so I spent about 30 minutes today watching Tiny Kitchen. And, Time uh, well spent. Yeah, and that's why uh, we're doing a little bit of a combination, because we're still talking food. While not exclusively breakfast, it is a food thing. Um, 
so to preface this, because I, I did a little bit of research, uh, what Tiny Kitchen is, is little, like, two to, like, five minute videos of just, you, you see, like, a hand or two making miniature versions of food in a dollhouse kitchen, and it's real food. Yes. And there's no, there's no, like, voice, there's no dialogue, nothing. It's just music and them cooking these tiny dishes. Uh, and I did a little bit of research, and it, it is made by a production company called Taste Made. Mm-hmm. Um, they're, they're, they're a production company, they do YouTube stuff, and the whole idea happened because one of the producers bought his daughter a dollhouse, and they didn't know what to do with the spare. So he brought it into the studio, and somebody did this. They And they, they made a series of like little mini foods, and they're like, well, we'll see. And it's got, like, millions of viewers now. It's crazy. It's this, like, giant, like, blown-up thing on the internet. So, Aaron, why do you know about this? Um, like most people who stumble across these odd pockets of the internet, I stumbled across this odd pocket of the internet. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, yeah, it's one of those things where you don't really know where it comes from. It's kind of like tasty videos where eventually one's just going to show up on your feed. Yep. Uh, and I I was actually considering maybe using tasty video um, as a subject as well, but I was like, no, you know what? Tiny Kitchen's much more interesting to me. Um, so, yeah, I just, I just stumbled across it, and I was like, what? And, like, at first I didn't really believe that it was real food. It couldn't be. It's too small. It's ridiculous. And no, here it is. They have custom-made little knives. Like, it's it's weird enough that, like, the food is small, but everything's small. So if they're cutting the small carrot, yep. they're going to have a small handmade knife. Mm-hmm. And and they cut it with the small knife, and they cook it in a small little saucepan. Right. And that, that, has a, that sits on top of a small little stove. That, that was my favorite moment. I, I had two... I, I was thinking, I, I watched the like six episodes or five episodes. And the first one I watched was the Valentine's day one in which they make a tiny cake. And I'm going like, Oh, I guess they like, they, they like take it over and they put it in this little oven. And I'm like, Oh, I guess they're going to like, they'll do like a quick cute cut and then they'll come back and like, they'll have baked it in like an actual like microwave oven or something. No, they do a time lapse of it baking in the itty bitty weird little oven they have. <laughs> and I was like, what? I was it's like, that's great. so crazy. Uh, they, like, legit baked it, and then later in another video, I was watching one for, um, uh, it was, like, little, it was, like, sausage sandwiches or something. I couldn't tell. And the way they, like, boiled water and made, they made, like, a little stove, like, an old-style stove, is yeah. they, they put a tea candle on a little holder in the stove door where normally you would have the, the fire. You would build, like, a, a little, like, firewood yeah. thing. And they close that, and it's just a tea candle underneath it as the burner. I was like, that's freaking in- ingenious. <laughs> it's, it's great. It's it's fascinating. It's And it's like, it, it has such a, there's like a technicality kind of draw to it. Like watching somebody do something really meticulous where you just focus in really heavily on it. Yep. Like, how are they going to do this? There's no way. But then they do it, and it's... Like, you have to be so precise in some of these recipes. So seeing, like, the very micro versions of the same thing is is equally fascinating, because it was already a hard dish to do regular size, and here this person is doing it, at, at, like, way smaller than... And again, this is a dollhouse. So just think of how small that is. It's tiny. Um... The weirdest one that got me is, like, I'm watching the person make eggs, right? Or use eggs, in a sense. And I'm like, but even the yolks are small. <laughs> how, did, how did they... Oh, they're quail eggs. Yep. Uh, oh, my God. They do such crazy things, man. And I, So, I, I've been thinking about this. And, um... Like, the only reason I can think that, like, for this being so successful is that... It is, it is kind of like, I imagine, in the same vein as those, like, ASMR videos and stuff. It's like, oh, for some people, it's like a super relaxing thing to watch. And, like, I found mm. myself, I was like, oh, watching this is, like, weirdly, rela- la- like, relaxing. Because it's kind of like watching a cooking show in a little, mm-hmm. like, three or five minute bit. 
but it's got this really soothing music and everything's like brightly and happily lit and it's this super cute little like rustic doll kitchen it's really adorable yeah. and it's like calming it's weird i was like oh I, i'm so mellow now as i'm sitting here sipping my coffee in my chair it's like this is really cool uh and that's what i imagine is the audience like that's the only thing i can think of is that it's like it's one of those things that like if you scroll through on like Facebook or YouTube and it pops up and you just like kind of watch the first few seconds you just kind of get relaxed into it. Uh, what about you? Yeah, I don't know. I think there's just also the component of like we tend to love extreme versions of things, right? And yep. cooking for a long time has been the opposite of this. It's not about making the smallest things; it's about making the biggest things. Yep. So. I mean, like, you had stuff like, do you remember Epic Meal Time? So that's actually what I was going to bring up, is that oh, that okay. is what I did as my counter research for this, is that I watched a lot of uh, Epic Meal Time. Yeah, I, like, that's the opposite end of the spectrum. And for a long time, we had stuff like that. Or, you know, people trying to break Guinness Books of World Records for largest, you name it, cookie, whatever. Um, but the thing is, is, like, there wasn't the same level of technicality put into making something absurdly big. Like, Epic Meal Time was literally just a bunch of guys going, throw more fucking bacon in it. And they just throw a bunch of bacon in it and make absurd casserole things. Or a cheeseburger. And they're like, yeah! Like, if you were going to do something similar to a tiny kitchen, but bigger, I would expect, like, a group of scientists actually trying to figure out how they can make a device that could do, like, how do we fold the large omelet? Okay, we do that. It'd be like Mythbusters, where the, it's the whole process of building up to finally making a gigantic omelet. Or just giant uh, mushroom. Like, having the giant ingredients would be really funny. Like, how do you make giant versions of the same ingredients? Like a giant block of cheese. Uh, and you have to somehow shred it. So there's just a guy, like, scraping pieces off the cheese <laughs> with, like, a stick thing they built. Um, so that's, like, to me, there's, like, a level of technicality that makes it even more interesting where you just get kind of, like, sucked into, like, how are they doing this? I like, get watching that. some watching somebody, cut, like, cut with a tiny knife or, like, flip, uh, like, a pancake in a tiny little saucer pan is, is really interesting. It's like, Wow. That's, I think that kind of goes hand in hand with the soothing aspect of it. Mm -hmm. It's not so much just that it's soothing. It's like meticulous. It's like, whoa. you just get hypnotized by it. Like, yeah, definitely. How, how are they um, doing this? But it was so like, I, I watched like, like I said, I watched like five or six of these and I was like, this is fun. Uh, like I was like, this is really relaxing. And then I went and I, I watched some Epic Meal Time and I was like, this is fucking awesome. Oh, uh, so... I, uh, I, I have decided that I am an epic mealtime guy over a tiny kitchen guy, but I, I, I get the tiny kitchen thing now. I so, just, it's just definitely not my, like, like, it's not something I think I would, like, subscribe to. Like, I would never, like, seek this out. Well, that's the thing. You never have to seek this thing out. Yeah, no, you said it will eventually so it's gonna eventually find me, like, every week. Yes, my uh, computer so, and my phone hear me saying the words tiny kitchen and they understand yes. and they will now find it for me. Uh, so it only gets better from tiny kitchen because what? tiny kitchen is not the only channel that has come up from this. So Tell if me you're thinking like knock off of tiny kitchen. Oh, there's, there's multiples and here's the best part. Uh, there is a, there's like a one called like Walking with Giants, or is that the band name? Uh, I want to make sure. Giants is the band name. Oh, is it? Mm -hmm. Hold on. I know it's going to be here somewhere. Yeah, it's called Walking with Giants. It's, it's basically the same exact thing. Um, there's one called Miniature Space. A Tiny Kitchen <laughs> is probably the most relevant you're going to find, but then, but then. There is one called Thai, uh, Vanilla Ham Ham. What? And it is, they make the food, and then they feed it to an adorable little hamster. Like, this person is preparing actual meals for his little hamster. 
It's not just feeding him that hamster food. He's making this. Him. I have seen. I have seen these. Yes, it's great. It's the best. It's the only, the only plausible way to expand how fun this is is to have a tiny little hamster enjoy it. I think my favorite is when they make him a little thing of spaghetti and he like slurps up the spaghetti. Oh no, Aaron. What? Uh, vanilla ham ham died. Oh. Well, that's the show. <laughs> Bye. <He passed> away. <laughs> We're done Back now. We're July. canceled forever. I'm so sad. I was so happy to watch. I hope. I hope he died adventure. eating. <laughs> like he, he was. He was two years and eight months old, guys. That's good life for a hamster. Especially one being felt fed gourmet meals. You know what, guys? In order of him, in honor of him, I will continue my ventures into becoming the world's greatest Hammond main in Overwatch. Because <laughs> Aaron um, probably doesn't get this. Uh, Hammond is a a hamster that built a robot mech, and that's, wait, that's how he fights in Overwatch. <laughs> Is this a new over or new er Overwatch character? He's the last one that was uh, the second to last one that was released. Man, they were running out of ideas towards the uh, end. So no, so he he has been referenced before in the material. He uh, I well, he, I know that. So so has, so has Doomfist, but he was yeah. still not that interesting of a character. Really, Doomfist is very cool. Again, I'm I'm somewhat persuaded by uh, that video game reviewer. He's a tool. I like him. <laughs> who is this guy i need to know he sounds this like is, bad this is the guy that raised three hundred thousand plus dollars doing a donkey kong 64 oh this stream. is h bomber guy i officially dislike him he sounds bad you don't trust me you will come to disagree with him but appreciate his rhetoric <laughs> uh false uh, I'm, I'm mad at all the words that i've heard come from him so far uh, uh like i it's one of those things where, like, I, I there's only, like, one video game critic like that that I watch. It's uh, Yahtzee from, uh, I think it's, I forget which channel that he's from, but Yahtzee just does, like, angry, like, video reviews called No Punctuation, and he hates everything, uh, but I still sounds enjoy like it. Sounds like a terrible, that sounds like a terrible gimmick. Uh, Can't well, just hate everything. Because he's just, like, a very grumpy, cynical old gamer man. Yeah, I like H-Bomber Guy not specifically because he dislikes everything, because he doesn't. He likes a lot of things. Um, it makes a lot of good that Scott likes. Yeah, basically that's what it seems like. Um, but he does is it like uh, fun, Aaron. Is that what it is? Fun? No, he loves fun. You're wrong. Um, he, uh, he's also the one I mentioned made a really good video about, uh, speed running, which was really interesting. And he has a really good one on, uh, HP Lovecraft, um, where he talks about this really obscure film called Cthulhu. Um, that has nothing to do with the actual Cthulhu storyline and has more similarities to the the one where the guy goes to the sea seaside town that everybody like turns into a I think that's like Innsmouth or something. Innsmouth. Uh at the, the town of Innsmouth or something like that. Um there's a chance that it might get real loud on my end because I believe one of the biker clubs is about to roll past my house. Oh yeah! I can hear a couple of them. I don't know if it's all of them. Ever like this happens like once a month, especially if it's a little warmer for like a day. You will just hear them all coming out, like just hammering down the the, the road. Oh god, I hate bikers sometimes. <laughs> I actually like. I have a lot of uh, my family has a lot of biker friends, but God, when you're just out and it's a nice day and it's quiet and then all of a sudden you hear like 50 harleys rolling past you're like oh jesus christ shut up <laughs> see i grew up on that sound so i love it no i can't so I'm like go away oh man so aaron do you have anything else on tiny kitchen because this is the thing so we had kind of planned on today being a little shorter because we both have uh things to do post stream or post uh podcast recording so well, uh what do you think where do you think tiny kitchen can go because as we know, once something is done on the internet, the only thing that people can think to do with it is copy it and paste it everywhere, and then hopefully it will evolve into something more interesting and new. See, that's the thing. I, I, with YouTube, I, I've been surprised. What I'm seeing is that a lot of these places, a lot of these uh, like people, these companies, these channels that make interesting and unique brands and maintain the quality, they don't change a lot. Like, Epic Mealtime, I was watching... No, they don't change, but there will be 
there will be those that follow. There are like knockoffs and stuff, but I mean, like I don't. I know there are knockoffs of Epic Meal Time, but I don't know any. Um, so like, I when I say one. Tiny Kitchen, I mean the concept, much less the channel. So where do you think people will take this new and exciting? Oh, I, field? I'm sure it will be like a, like at some point, like somebody will do a ham ham knockoff where they like feed it to their ferret. Um, I don't but those know. aren't small enough. They are probably going to do one where they cook things for bugs. And then it'll turn into, not tiny kitchen, micro microscopic kitchen. kitchen, micro kitchen, where this dude has, like, tweezers and big magnifying glass and is, like, cooking with with very precision-based tools. <laughs> this is the future of tiny kitchen. Yeah, I get, the, the thing that I always find cool is, uh, not exactly cooking, but is the, the, the micro art. Mm, yeah. Where they, like, carve, like, the tip of a pencil into, like, a Statue of Liberty. Yes. And I'm like, how... I don't know. I love cooking, so like, it it just makes sense that I would find this fascinating. It, it, so this is one of those things. I was like, I was thinking about this, and I was like, I don't like know, like why? Like, it, like I get it. Like now, after watching it, I get the like calming and relaxing nature. But I, it's again, it's not something I would ever seek out. And it, it, this is definitely one of those things where like this is a hundred and ten percent not my wheelhouse. And I guess the easiest way for me to understand it is for me to think of like something like all the video game trivia shows and stuff. Like, I love Did You Know Gaming and all of their extensions. So they have, like, Did You Know Movies, and now they have Did You Know Food. And I love those channels. They're, like, 10, 15-minute videos. Uh, just load it with a bunch of random fun facts. And those are, like, crack to me. They're, they are, like, they are heroin in its most pure form. And I need it. Injected weekly. Because uh, I love them. I do. Uh, like, they, they are my favorite thing. If like Like, if one of those is on YouTube... The only thing that I would watch before that is a new Red Letter Media. Like, that—that that is the only thing that can pry me away. So, I, like, I get that everybody has their own taste and, like, their own thing is, I guess, what I'm getting to. And this is, while it definitely relaxes me, it's just not mine. And I'm like, I don't, it's weird. It's a weird thing. Yeah, it is definitely weird. I will give you that. This is your weird thing. You By the way, one. there's one I'm looking at here called... Real mini Oreo cakes and cupcakes where they have specialty made tiny Oreos, mm -hmm. which is great. Like they have the box art and everything. Oh my God. There's tiny KFC chicken. I have this little cake that I squish and then it gets bigger. It's not small enough. Podcast can't say, but I have it. Not small enough is my, my I don't know what these are that. called, but everybody needs a stress ball like this one feel like I'm waffling at this point on the subject of Tiny Kitchen. But it's I just can't help Michaels it. Michael's and Michelle Entertainment Inc. It's adorable. It, it's a little cake. It's, it's fascinating. I love it. There's there's tiny sweet and sour chicken, Scott. I just want sweet and sour chicken. And it's on top of, like, rice, but it just looks like noodles because the rice grains are, are huge. Near, yeah. nearly the size of the chicken. And it's like 12 grains of rice. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, my favorite is whenever it's something that's got to be really small, but, like, it doesn't actually come in small. Like, chicken. Yeah. There's only so much, you, like, you can only cut it down so small. Oh, they do. So it's always, like, like three, like, tiny, like, bites of, like, chunks of chicken. Yeah. Like, when they did tiki masala. Oh, that was so cool, though. It's like, it's a tiny curry. Who are they going to feed that tiny curry to? I don't know, but uh, that's definitely not curiosity. ham ham. Does somebody eat it afterwards? Like, does somebody on set, like, do they, like, ro like rock paper for it and somebody gets they to eat it? They just lick it up in one lick, like, huh. <laughs> we just spent six hours making this this uh, literal, like, pinky-sized cupcake. Uh, like, that is supposed to be a massive Valentine's Day cake. Uh, somebody gets at to least, eat it. We'll split at it, least guys. It's, <laughs> like, one thing I can say for certainly is it's not a waste. Like, it's a tiny little thing that wouldn't feed, like... It hardly feeds the hamster. Yeah. I, I was just curious if, like, it, like, does it taste good? Yeah, that would be the question. Like, does it taste Cause it looks like it's supposed to taste? It always looks exactly like it's supposed to, but does it taste like it's supposed to? And that's what I want to know. Can, I, I demand samples. I demand they do this in front of a live Scott, studio audience. Scott, go to the tiny kitchen. Or that's start first, your own tiny kitchen. That's our first goal. Yeah, oh... We could have tiny breakfast, you and I. 
Oh, God. We could finally eat all of the breakfast that's recommended in one of those cereal commercials. We could. If it was all tiny. Yeah, it just has to be appropriately portioned. Yeah, tiny cereal, tiny pancakes, tiny orange juice, you make tiny loops, muffins. Like literally three lo- Fruit Loops in the bowl. <laughs> tiny fruit, tiny, uh, what else do they usually recommend? Tiny bacon, tiny sausage. Yeah, but somebody, somebody tiny like, eggs. We have to have, like, tiny fruit salad. Yep. Tiny because we'd salad. have to, like, dice, like, like into, like, like, millimeter-sized, like, pieces of fruit. Scott, your business side, so reach out to Tiny Kitchen and tell them we are very interested in having tiny breakfast. Hey, we would like a tiny breakfast. Uh, we're, we're super into your... Eat breakfast. Yeah, we're super into breakfast, and we really want tiny breakfast. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. But, it's uh, the man, easy way to expand have, our channel. Uh, any, any closing thoughts for this? Because I think this is just going to be a, a really short episode. Because I, yeah. I, I, I have no other thoughts on the tiny kitchen. And uh, I'm actually hungry again, despite the fact that I literally ate like an hour ago. No, I feel you. Yeah, I'm actually hungry myself. Yeah, I, th- I'm, I think before uh, before I, I stream tonight, I'm going to make the trek across the street to the supermarket, grab myself an energy drink, and some noms. And because I'm, I I want Scott to be frustrated on his stream tonight, I'm going to send him Fallout 3 is garbage, and here's why. <laughs> Guys, this has been We Could Have Done Porn, where we dislike Aaron immensely. Uh, it's been a ton of fun having you guys here. Thank you again. Don't forget that you can find us on... Uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, everything except for Google+, because that's dead now. <laughs> and oh, yeah. uh, uh, we are officially live on patreon.com slash romanbear, and uh, we will be live uh, Monday or Sunday through Monday with uh, the streams over on Roman Bear streams on twitch.tv. And uh, don't forget, we're going to be doing Anthem coming this week, so 